Good morning, everyone. I'm Kate Kress. I'm John Keyes. And we're here to welcome you before the service at St. James in the City. And this morning, we wanted to take a minute to tell you about a couple of special educational offerings coming up. The first is this week, we're starting a confirmation class. It's beginning on Zoom, but we hope to shift to in-person meetings. And there'll be a wonderful service project toward the end. And then in May, confirmation at our cathedral. So if you are a young person, I would say, Oh, maybe 12 to 18, thank you, <laughs> um, then please uh, email me at kcress at stjla.org to uh, receive the Zoom link for this week. And I'm really looking forward to being with all of you. Father John and I will be doing that together. And, and then starting March 8th, <laughs> and then every Tuesday in Lent, we'll be starting our adult education class, which will also count as preparation for confirmation, reaffirmation, and reception. And it's entitled Ever Ancient, Ever New, and we'll be looking at various aspects of Anglicanism, like prayer life, scripture, liturgy, and so much Book more. Book of Common Prayer. Book of Common Prayer, with yes. some fun guest speakers dropping in throughout the, <laughs> throughout the course. So we're really excited to offer that as well. And if you're interested in that, shoot me an email at jfuss at sdjla.org. Do we know if that one's gonna be Zoom or in person yet? We don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see where the spirit leads us. <laughs> where, yeah, see where the virus leads yes, us to. <laughs> yes, and we're just trying to keep our, our, our spirits up because we know this is a really frustrating time for everybody, and yet life goes on, and we love to teach, and we love to learn, and we're really looking forward to these opportunities to be with you. And if you're new to St. James, maybe you're, you've never even set foot here in person yet, you can jump on these these Zooms and be with us and learn how to sort of grow into this, or at least explore this wonderful tradition. So, any last words? No, nope. so we're looking forward to having you join us yep. in these wonderful courses, and we hope you have a great morning, and we'll see you soon. Enjoy the service. Bye.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and sorry, <laughs> and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now we will read Psalm 19 responsibly by half verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. One day tells its tale to another. 
Although they have no words or language, and their, voices are not heard. their sound has gone out into all lands. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. By them also is your servant enlightened. Who can tell how often he offends? Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding county. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogues on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read in the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it had been written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of our Lord. Our first lesson this morning came from Nehemiah, a book about a people recently set free by their Babylonian captors. Nehemiah's call was to rebuild Jerusalem, the place of peace, after incurring massive damage from various invaders during their time in exile. And so a few scuffles notwithstanding, he does rebuild the city. And at the conclusion of the rebuilding, being a man of prayer, Nehemiah assembles all the people together to pray, to hear the word of God. After spending so much time in exile, there were probably some who hadn't hear, heard these stories of providence, mercy, and protection since they were a child 
sitting next to their grandparents in synagogue. And perhaps some, being born in exile, hadn't even heard these stories at all. Maybe this was the first time that they heard the story of Joseph forgiving his brothers after leaving him in a ditch to die. Maybe they were curious as to why Joseph trusted this God, this God who Joseph believed could draw good out of even the most evil of situations. Maybe they were surprised about this God who not only could do this, but who actually did, who met Joseph in the darkest moment of his life and in the way only God could, took an abandoned dying man and used him to liberate God's people in captivity. Maybe this is the first time they heard about Moses stretching out his arms and parting the Red Sea as Pharaoh's army closed in on them. Maybe this is the first time they heard the story about how they asked for quail as they wandered in the desert and how God gave it to them abundantly. And maybe, against all odds, as they stood there once again on the soil where God had led their ancestors, as they heard that line read, I will take you for my people, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Maybe that's when they got it. I am setting you free from what you think is possible. You are mine, and I will do the impossible to show you that love. I'd imagine that's the line where all the people wept. As we wade through Epiphany Tide, we are presented with a collection of images of an incarnate God you and I came to know in the person of Christ. This person who is both truly God and truly human. And inasmuch as some of these stories extol the divinity of Christ, such as that epic scene at Christ's baptism where a voice from heaven announces, you are my beloved, announcing the almighty God's pleasure in his only begotten son, I think these stories tell us something about what God is trying to show us through the humanity of Christ as well. You are my beloved. Those are the warming words of God that he wants us to hear as the frigid waters of the baptismal font are poured on our heads. In this morning's gospel, we hear Christ in his early days of ministry boldly announcing that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And indeed, as we move through Luke's gospel this year, we'll hear stories of all of that happening, this eternal jubilee of being released from the power of sin and death, all as people are set free from their ailments by their almighty God. But we hear this bold announcement in the wake of the incarnation and are challenged by the fact that it was Christ's human hands which touched the eyes of the blind to restore their sight. His human voice, which commanded, be silent and come out of him, as he spoke to those who were visited by an unclean spirit. It was that final human breath exhaled from the cross, which set us free from our sin. Not the works of humanity, but divine work through humanity. The ability for plain folks like you and like me to somehow be agents of setting others free. 
I guess it would have been just about nine years ago since we repeat the same readings every three years when I first found this to be true. A few months earlier, I had started visiting a previously homeless man named Toby who was in a nursing home. He had been a soup kitchen regular and was recovering there after a stroke with, which left him with a rather small vocabulary. Really, only two phrases by my count. Go away. That's how Toby would greet me each visit. And I don't like it here. You could hear the pain in his voice from being in an unfamiliar environment and being unable to see his dear friends. I really only knew two things about Toby. He loved listening to Marilyn Monroe, and rumor had it, he was also known from time to time to dress up like Marilyn Monroe. Since we really couldn't talk, our first visits together in the nursing home mostly involved me playing Marilyn Monroe on my iPod as he closed his eyes. Awake for sure, but off in a peaceful place for him. One day I came in and he looked distraught. After telling me to go away a few times as per our normal routine, he finally held up a pencil with a broken tip. I asked him what he needed the pencil for and he pulled out this beautiful sketch. So I went and I got the pencil sharpened. The next week I brought him over a sketch pad and some colored pencils. And the following week, the sketch pad was all filled up. After I put on some Marilyn Monroe, Toby handed me the sketchbook. As I opened it up, the first picture was a woman and her child. The caption, me and my mom. As I flipped through the pages, I realized this was his autobiography. Sketches of various moments of his life about how he had lost his job and about how they had towed away the green car in which he was living. That one was captioned, then they took my home away. And the last page, there is a picture of Marilyn Monroe, but this time with no caption. I turned to Toby and asked, this is a picture of you, isn't it? That was the first time I ever saw him smile. The next day in church, I heard our song. One day tells its tale to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard. The blind shall see. The mute shall tell their stories. My epiphany that morning, God is still at it. God is still setting us free. And now let us join in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Church of God, our diocese, and our parish. For our government leaders and all those in positions of power and public trust, that all may be filled with truth and love. For the peace of the world, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for those we have injured or offended. For the right and just use of the riches of creation, help us all to participate in the healing and welfare of our planet. For all who suffer and all who are in danger. For those who celebrate their birthdays, anniversaries, or seek other blessings this week. For all who have been commended to our prayers, especially Aries, Betsy, Carolyn, Elizabeth, Joseph, Karen, Ralph, Rebecca, Theodore, Trinidad, and Tom. For all who have died, especially Dora Evans, and for all those who have perished from the coronavirus pandemic. May they have rest and peace in life eternal. For those prayers we share aloud and for those prayers we keep in the silence of our own hearts. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us share the peace. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you here this morning and so good to see all of you at home as well. Peace to you who are worshiping at home. We're so, 
so looking forward to being able to gather more fully in the weeks to come. And I, I think that Omicron has peaked and things will be getting better and better. In the meantime, a reminder that everything you need to know about St. James, basically you can find out by scanning this QR code. And that includes past issues of the newsletter, a giving link, uh, bulletins, all of that. Our uh, music program is dark tonight, but we'll, be, but we'll be back again in February. And I wanted to let you know, you've probably noticed that we've been hearing our beautiful Steinway the last few weeks and not our amazing organ. And that's because our organ blower is under repair. Now, don't ask me what that means, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out and make a little video about it next week. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a perfectly normal thing that happens to organs when they get older. And um, so it's getting repaired and should be back in action in the next few weeks. We're having some classes. We're starting a confirmation class this coming week via Zoom. So email me directly if you'd like the Zoom link for that. And during Lent, Father John and I are going to be teaching a class for adults called Ever Ancient, Ever New, all about the Episcopal Church, which also serves as confirmation prep, reception, all those things. And you can just take it for fun. <laughs> and uh, for those people who are being confirmed, we'll be, we'll be going to the confirmation service at our cathedral in May. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, that at all times and in all places we should give thanks to you, mighty creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Savior sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned into riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the creation and for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to Jesus in his sacrifice, that we may be ex made acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed James, our patron, and all your saints, we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as Christ our Savior has taught us in the languages of our own hearts and wherever we may be this morning, it is our joy to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
the gifts of God for the people of God. God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect you in the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>